the current season of Game of Thrones has been really interesting, with lots of really cool stuff happening, and this episode was no exception. In fact, they even went a lot further and did things that surprised even me. Now, I've read the book, so I know roughly what's going to happen, and certain things in this episode, particularly the ending, really surprised me. I didn't expect it in the slightest. And while I understand they did it for TV purposes and sort of like providing motivation for certain characters and changing things up because they've changed a lot already, but in this episode, Cersei armed the Faith Militant, sending them after Loras Tyrell and causing a whole lots of problems. Marjorie was infurious. These scenes do a great job of showing what sort of leader Tommen is. He's a good leader but he's not strong enough yet, and he's easily manipulated. We see Lancel again as the faithful militant fanatical person. He's making a bigger impact, and it's going to be interesting to see how that progresses throughout the rest of the season. That's not the only thing that Cersei does in this episode to get rid of Marjorie's power. She then sends her master of Triton Mace Tyrell to Bravos alongside Merintrant. Coincidentally, where Arya is at the moment, and since Merintrant is on her list, are we going to see another name crossed off? Back at Winterfell, Sansa is in the trips looking over her family and has a really interesting conversation with Littlefinger about Stannis' plans and if you know that storyline it's going to be quite interesting stuff and I can't wait to see more from that. He tells her the whole story about Harren Hall and which led to the rebellion, the end of the Targaryen dynasty, everything that's happened in the show so far. It's a really interesting story and I can't wait to see what happens with her, especially as Littlefinger is heading down south again and leaving her all alone. Meanwhile, Jorah is still taking Tyrion captive. I thought it was interesting the way that Tyrion deduces who he is and what his motivations are, kind of a Sherlock Holmes sort of moment. We finally get to see Jamie and Bronn arrive in Dawn and get to see Jamie do some fighting for the first time. Can't wait to see how he progresses with that, but I like this tactic of using his hand. I thought that was quite a clever thing to do. Those two actors have great chemistry together and I'm so glad they've been paired up for this season of Game of Thrones. I really can't wait to see more from them. We also get to see the Sand Snakes in Dawn, who we see meet up with Alaria. They know that Jamie's in Dawn and all hell is about to break loose. I can't wait to see what happens with that. While Prince Durand, the leader of Dawn, wants peace, those guys want war and revenge over Oberyn's death last season, which was so amazing and a little bit gross if I'm honest, but it was an incredible scene, so go watch that if you can. At the other end of Westeros, we get to see more from the Wall. Melisandre comes on to Jon Snow quite heavily in this scene, but nothing much really happens in that scene. Also at Castle Black, we get to see one of the most amazing scenes between Stannis and his daughter, Shireen. Stannis is not really known for his emotional scenes, so to have something like this was a total game changer. And finally, we come to the end of the episode. The scenes that shocked me the most. I just couldn't believe it. The scenes in Marine start off so nicely and innocent, but even with Danny, Sir Barristan, Grey Worm, and the Sons of the Harpy were an incredible way to end this episode. You get to see so much destruction and death and the Unsullied coming under attack from all sides. The Unsullied, they're mostly straight up fighters and they're not suited to this guerrilla style tactics that the Sons of the Harpy are using. Fortunately for them, Sir Barristan is near. He hasn't got his arm on though, so when he takes a hit, he really takes a hit. Throughout the series, it's been mentioned that Sir Barristan is this legendary knight, this fierce fighter. So I thought it was great that we finally got to see him in action. Even while under attack and being injured, he managed to take out at least a dozen people before he was slain himself. And if he had to go, I'm glad he had to go in that way. We finally got to see him fight. It was amazing. And I'm just shocked that he died. That he doesn't die in the books. His storylines are going to go unfinished and they're probably going to be given to someone else. I don't know who that would be just yet. In the next episode, I bet it's going to come as such a shock to Danny who's lost another of her close advisors. And that is going to set her up to so many events that I can't wait to see what's going to happen with that. Let me know your thoughts on the episode down in the comments. Like this video. And why not check out some of my other reviews of Game of Thrones Season 5. Links to those will be down in the description. My name is James Hayward. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next week.
the scenes in Marine, the scenes in Marine with Danny, so Barristan, Grey Worm, and and the Sons of the Harpy, and and the Sons of the Harpy were some of the most interesting of the entire episode. Were an interesting way. Were were an incredible were an incredible way to end this episode. It was so good. I didn't expect what happened. It was so amazing. I just couldn't. Even when I saw the. Even when I saw the sons of the harpy preparing for their attack, I didn't imagine that. So Barristan and Grey Worm would get caught up in it. It. You see the. You get see t you get see so much destruction and death and the insanity coming under attack from all sides. Those, they are. The insanity are they are they are mostly straight up fighters. What they are mostly straight up fighters, not sort of. They are not. They are mostly straight up fighters and they are not suited to this guerrilla style tactics. That are, and are not suited to the guerrilla style tactics that the sons of the harpy are using. Fortunately for them, Sir Barristan is near. He hasn't got his armor on though, so when he takes a hit, he really takes a hit. He's this legendary knight. Everyone throughout the series, throughout every series, Sir Barristan has been mentioned, and it's, throughout the series, it has been mentioned that Sir Barristan is this legendary knight, this fear, this fierce fighter. This and and even. And even at a great age, he is this fierce fighter that no one wants to mess with. So if he's in, so I thought it was great that we finally got to see him in action, and for, and he managed managing to take out tw managing to take out at least a dozen people before he got taken. He managed to take out at least a dozen people. Well, and even though he got injured in the process. Before he died, he managed to take out at least even even while under attack and being injured himself, he managed to take out twelve. Even while under attack and being injured, he managed to take out at least a dozen people before he was slain himself. And Grey Worm and and if he had. And if he had to go, I'm glad he had to go in that way. We finally got to see him fight. It was amazing. And I'm just shocked that he died. He doesn't die in the books, so that's the thing. The reason why I'm so the reason why I'm so shocked is that he doesn't die in the books. His storylines are gonna go unfinished and they're probably gonna be given to someone else. I don't know who that would be just yet, but But I really look forward to seeing but I really look forward but I really look forward to seeing those aspects, whoever takes them on. Now, as I said, I understand. Now, as, now, as I said earlier, I don't know why. Now, as I said earlier, I was shocked about this, but I understand why they did it. It provides so much motivation for Danny and her actions, what she, and the actions that she takes next. It's. It provide. It's gonna come. It's gonna come as such a shock to Danny, who's lost. It is going to come, it is going to come, in the next episode, I bet it's going to come as such a shock to Danny who's lost another of her close advisors. And that is going to send her on a really different, and that is going to send her on a really different path. And that is going to set her up to so many events that I can't wait to see what's going to happen with that. It's going to be so good and I just can't believe he died. It's, it's such a shame, but it was, it was a cool way to, it was just a cool way to do it. It was such a shame, but it was a cool way to do it in the end. And it was a cool way to do it, and such an incredible way to end the episode. I was just left really at the end of that. It was incredible. The use of sound, the use of music, the use of sound, visuals, and that just ending. That was just so good. So good. what a way to end it. Let me know what your thoughts are on the episode. Let me know your thoughts on the episode down in the comments, like this video if you liked it, and why not check out some of my other reviews for the rest, and I will leave links to the rest, and I will leave, li and I shall, and I will, uh, 
And why not check out some of my other reviews of Game of Thrones Series 5? And why not check out some of my other reviews of Game of Thrones Season 5? Down. Links will be down in the description. Links to those will be down in the description. Links to those will be down in the description. My name is James Hayward. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next week.